My Spotify wrapped results for this year weren't the worst thing ever, but if you asked me the top 5 songs of my 2021, I feel like I would have given you a different answer, and so that's what this video is. Except it's 4 instead of 5 because I couldn't think of a 5th one, but to make up for that here's a bunch of honorable mentions. It is a very tender song. It starts out with that processed acapella sound. It's very well done and it's a beautiful texture. And then the beat drops and it moves real fast, but it remains tender. It's a really cool sensation. With the fuzzy synths and choppy pitched up voice, you can feel the emotion just trying to break through. And the album as a whole, made by Wave Dash, titled World Famous Tour, is full of variety, has a ton of unique sounds, and is just full of great moments like this. The ultimate track on Aguas de Amazonas by Philip Glass and this Brazilian band Wakti starts off slow, some beautiful grand low siren organ, some screeching but soft, uh, they sound like strings. The album plays with so many amazing sounds that aren't just unique or novel, but are actually insanely effective and emotional. And then the speed picks up, the layers add on, the lead voice is just going crazy. My favorite way to listen to this piece is just by putting it on my TV, turning up the volume, dimming the lights, and just getting swept away in the soundscape. The space this music creates just feels so insanely big. I feel like I'm looking not at the wall of my apartment, but down at the horizon 50 miles away. This would probably slap in a sensory deprivation tank. I'm definitely not that hip to music history, so I'm not sure if this is true, but to me it definitely sounds like an album just really far ahead of its time. Philip Glass is the goat, Wakti is incredible. There's probably so many stories about how these musicians came together and created this. Like apparently this album was commissioned for a ballet. But anyway, this is just minimalism at its finest. The penultimate track to Shai's album, Safety. Shai's music strikes me as brutally authentic. Not only does he write, produce, and perform everything himself, but his lyrics have this poetic, nebulous, inner monologue quality to them. It's pretty personal. You could say some rhymes or concepts run the risk of coming off as corny, but the reason Shy makes it work is because if you've ever seen his YouTube channel, you know that he truly lives by what he says. Like, he's not just saying something because he needed another bar, it probably actually happened to him. Musically, I love the minimalist percussive vibe. It really sets the tone, and I could just make a whole other video gushing about the beats in this album. He also has a unique voice and nice flows, especially on Confusion. But yeah, we love some good rebellious chill music. Poem to a Pigeon is my favorite though. I think it's saying, I don't have to have it all figured out. But I do know what brings me joy, so let's see where that adventure takes us and the instrumental nails that blissful vibe. Making music is hard. Being creative is hard, because art is the most existential thing you could devote yourself to. Because you feel like you have to make something good, which begs the question, why does anything sound good in the first place? Trying to crack that code, what, what's my sound, what's my style, is exhausting, and the longer you fail, the more terrifying it becomes. Why isn't it coming to me? Why is it so much harder for me to do it than it is for other people? How could I possibly have something unique to say when so many before me have already said so much? But I don't want to just play other people's music for the rest of my life. I want to make something myself that I can fall in love with. And you only have so much time in your life to find that love. If I remember the story correctly, Porter struggled for several years in a creative rut. And if you look at it, there were seven years between his debut album and this one, Nurture. This song starts off with a nice mix of strings, some atmospheric samples and sounds, and a super interesting processed voice that works surprisingly well with this gentle tone. And then the drop blows me away. I kind of grew up with EDM, being a kid in the late 2000s watching YouTube all the time. At first I loved it, I thought the music was insane, so many cool sounds I'd never heard before. 
But as the years went on, I noticed all the formulas and patterns, and these attempts at epic moments in these songs just kind of grew stale and predictable to me. Porter, though, makes every beat drop on this album special. On something comforting in particular, I gotta shout out the almost angelic harmony in the background, the strong melody on a great, unique sample, the splashy piano, the, just the phrasing and evolution of all the elements throughout the song. You can seriously feel the love that Porter put into the album throughout these years. There's several moments on this album where I just feel like I'm listening to a bass drop for the first time all over again. It reminds me of how hard it hit me when I first heard it as a kid. And that's because Porter doesn't overuse any of his tricks. He's not confined to a single genre. He's not gonna let that dictate what he puts into the music. He's just going to use whatever elements that he needs to to express himself. And that's something I really appreciate. The songwriting wraps it all together. Most of the album is a poetic inner conversation with the self, kind of like safety. It's a reminder that whatever you're looking for, you'll eventually find it. It'll take some work, but you already knew that. It may take a while, but that's okay. What's important is that you enjoy the process. Speaking of not being confined to a genre and just using whatever sounds available to you to best convey an emotion, shout out to Han Zimmer, the mad lad who put bagpipes in Dune, baby! Yeah! It's genius! It's awesome! Let's go!